Let's speak more about the outcome of that DA leadership contest. Bring in ENC, a political analyst and host of The Fix here on the channel, Karima Brown, joining us by Skype from Johannesburg. Good evening, Karima. So the election of John Steenhazen as federal leader of the Democratic Alliance, not the most surprising thing to happen this year, is it? Temekili, I'm not sure if you can hear me. The line is very bad. Uh, but let me just say, I'm not surprised by John Stianazen's runaway win over Mbali and Thule. Uh, this was a foregone conclusion, even though she put up a challenge. Uh, there was no appetite, really, in the Democratic Alliance uh, for change. And one could already see yesterday, when two of the proposals put forward by Mbali and Thule, the one, of course, um, about whether or not the DA should have a deputy leader was roundly defeated, then already you could see that uh, the party wasn't going to go for a new leader or a new direction. And Balin Tuli, of course, not in sync with the policy direction of the Democratic Alliance, uh, which, of course, um, has decided uh, that things like race will play um, a second fiddle uh, to what the DA calls equal opportunities. Uh, and I think Helen Ziller uh, emerging there as the chairperson of the Fed Federal, uh, you know, council uh, is uh, firmly in the driving seat. And the big question for me is whether John Stianazen is going to be his own man. And just to confirm, Karima, that we can hear you on the issue of race. It was reiterated again today by John Stianhazen in his victory speech that the DA will not center its policy or positions on race. You wonder then how big of an issue that's going to be for them as a party that wants to grow in an increasingly robust and contested political space where if you're looking to grow, I would expect that you'd want to speak to the majority of people in this country who are young, black, and often poor. Absolutely, uh, Tim Bekele. Um, it appears as if uh, the Democratic Alliance isn't necessarily prepared to contest for power uh, in the whole of the country, uh, given the fact that the Democratic Alliance is uh, a lot more concerned about its traditional base, which is a white conservative base um, that they, of course, lost in the last election to the Freedom Front Plus. And in the recent, uh, you know, um, by-elections, it's also shed um, voters to the, EN, uh, to the ANC. Um, one would think that the DA is perhaps satisfied with running the Western Cape and perhaps uh, some of the key metros, but it's certainly not a party that's positioning itself to take power uh, in South Africa. But one of the things that actually also is going to be difficult for the DA Tembekile is the point that John Stianazen made when he won his acceptance speech. He said that the DA will only, um, you know, form coalitions where the DA is in a clear majority. Now, smaller parties, as you know, have been formed by breakaway elements from the DA. Patricia DeLille with her good party and then Herman Mashaba. And um, it looks as if municipal elections which is going to happen next year, will be quite a fractured affair. And if the Democratic Alliance isn't the outright winner, but its stance is that unless it's in a commanding position, it won't be open for coalition politics, you could potentially see a lot of big metros and municipalities, and particularly district municipalities, ending up with hung governments. And that, of course, will affect things like service delivery. So the DA's problem isn't just its growth in the black communities. It it is also its ability uh, to go into strategic partnerships and coalitions with smaller opposition parties, particularly uh, with parties made up of former DA leaders, like in the city of Johannesburg with Herman Mashaba, and also in the city of Cape Town with Patricia DeLille. And the DA is very aware of its internal divisions. I mean, you listen to John Steenhazen in that victory speech today, making a point to heap praise on the contender, Mbalin Tuli, praising her for giving his campaign a run for their money. She, in the immediate comments, was very quick to reaffirm her commitment to the organization. But you wonder then if those two comments by the two sides that were vying for the job of federal leader are enough to smooth over those divisions, at least until after the 2021 local government election. Tembikili, I think this is a very important point. If you look at the policy positions that Mbali and Tuli had advanced uh, from the question of um, 
you know, foregrounding the issue of, of race, uh, looking at the question of affirmative action, but also things like um, rent control, for example, that was so quickly shut down. Marlin Tuli's ideological outlook is not the same as John Stiernay's, and Marlin Tuli is a social democrat in the Democratic Alliance. John Stiernay would like to fashion himself as a good old-fashioned liberal, even though uh, when the, he speaks about the DA is a party of individuals, if you look at the proposal around, around language rights, they're certainly advocating for group rights. Uh, and even though they don't make reference to Afrikaans, the person that proposed that uh, uh, resolution actually did so in Afrikaans. So I think it's going to be very hard, despite the spin, that they're going to work together. Because uh, from a policy perspective, these two leaders are at different ends of the political spectrum. Walin Tuli uh, is a much more uh, social democrat uh, in terms of her orientation. And, of course, uh, John Stiernazen, a lot more in line with Institute of Race Relations, Helen Ziller, uh, around trying to essentially make nice with an old white uh, base that had traditionally given uh, the DA its edge. And, of course, the irony here, uh, 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 Tembegile, is that it is Helen Ziller that is leading the charge against her own uh, policies, because remember, it's under her leadership that black leaders such as Musi Maimani and Lindy Mazibuko and others were fast tracked mm. in the party. And of course, that is what Helen Zilla now wants to rid the Democratic Alliance of. So I'm not sure for how long Balin Tuli can actually coexist with John Stenazen. And then the other reality is without there being a deputy leader, Balin Tuli is going to be confined to the province of KwaZulu Natal, where she is an NPL. And of course, the other big heavyweights are all in uh, the national leadership and also in parliament, Natasha Mazzoni uh, and, of course, uh, Ellen Zilla and, uh, you know, a whole host of other people uh, in parliament together with John Stiernays. And so um, it's going to be very difficult for Marlene Tuli's agenda to gain any traction because she's effectively confined uh, to the provincial legislature of KwaZulu-Natal. Karima Brown, political analyst and host of The Fix here on ENCA. Good to speak to you, Karima.